Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We're here again um, this week in New York at Corporate Board Members' uh, Annual Boardroom Summit, and it's a collection of CEOs and board members who come together to talk about boardroom trends and other governance issues. And it gives us a great opportunity to have resources and guests that can cover uh, a lot of these important topics. And joining me today is John Treslino, who is the Director of Business Solutions for Donnelly Financial Solutions, also called DFIN Solutions. And John, welcome to the show. Thank you, TK, for having me. This topic of ESG, um, I can't tell you how much it has dominated the three days that we've been here. Um, it's certainly something that the investors, State Street and others have told us, ISS, um, Glass Lewis has told us this is a big issue um, and that directors shouldn't ignore it. Um, at the same time, um, I've had the privilege of reading your white paper um, titled ESG Risk and Opportunities, Understanding the ESG Landscape. And I found it very thorough and uh, educational and actually, I think, going to be quite beneficial to people that are struggling to get their arms around this issue of ESG. Um, I assume that that's what you set out to accomplish in this. So um, can you just talk a little bit about the challenge that exists you know, in ESG? Absolutely, TK, and thank you for having me. So we set out to accomplish uh, two things when we wrote this white paper. One was to address from a high level the board's review process in getting familiar with the evolving landscape on ESG. And two, to set out a path that boards can follow and realizing that each board has their own journey. So no one board is, is, has the same journey for, around sustainability or ESG. It is truly a culture at the company, top down, bottom up, that needs to be identified. So the roadmap was designed with that kind of flexibility. Wherever you are on your journey, you can pick up the pieces, there are four steps in here, and begin to move forward and evolve your journey. The takeaway is everyone has a journey, and whether or not you're aware of it, investors are paying attention and you need to respond. This not only is a roadmap, but it, it really charts out and it, and it breaks it down into some categories that let that makes it easy to follow, and this just isn't easy, so that's helpful, but share with the audience how you've broken it down in the, to the different groups and what the different groups uh, contribute. Sure, so we basically have a four-step process. The initial process is kind of where you're starting to navigate your ESG issues, and to do that, you're bringing together a multidiscipline team working through your corporate ESG issues, and that would include HR, IR, communications, sustainability, those are the teams that have typically worked on sustainable uh, projects in the past, but you also want to bring in finance and procurement and others that haven't been involved in that process. So a truly multidisciplined approach. And in doing so, you're identifying what material ESG issues mean to your company and what sustainability means for your company. As I mentioned, it's, it's an individual journey based on your company. And so bringing all these stakeholders together is the very first step as an organization to understand how you can evolve forward. And I'm assuming that the white paper sort of lays this out and gives you a clear, and I noticed in there, there were also some examples, I think, of different things in the way that somebody can do it or other organizations that have done a good job with it. Yes, so we are planning to release this spring um, our proxy guide, which is 2019, which will have a whole new section just dedicated to environmental, social, and governance issues as presented in the proxy statement. And that's one step that companies have taken this year, that they can put some proxy policies and proxy procedures and oversight of risk in that proxy this year while they're building out item two, which is the roadmap. 
the roadmap means that you have to do a materiality mapping of your company's information. That's the information that Sustainalytics, MSCI, um, ISS, um, Rebecca Sam are pulling together and they're telling a story with your data. So you're doing a mapping of what story they're telling with what data they're collecting and finding out from that team that you um, brought together how you can better tell your story by doing this gap analysis of the material items. So that's step number two. Step number three is to look m one step further. By putting together decision useful data, you'll want to follow some of the emerging frameworks. The Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosure, SASB, Sustainable Accounting Standards Boards, or GRI, which has been around for 20 years. So step number three is taking a look at the frameworks and then looking at the information that is on the market that is being consumed by these different ratings and rankings and building out a concise set of company-specific KPIs. And that's the key, company-specific KPIs that you begin to manage and measure with this disciplined cross-functional team to tell your story. So four would be telling, telling your story. It's getting to the goals. And that is truly the engagement process. You get to the point where you've identified all these issues and you want to report them. Are you going to report them in the proxy? Will you put them in the 10K? Would you put them in a CSR or sustainability report? Um, we're seeing companies post this online. And there's an engagement process now that starts. What was in that report? What did the investors like? What didn't they like? And not just the investors, employees, customers, other stakeholders are involved in this process. So that's all part of that four-step uh, program. And, and the interesting part about uh, what we've heard in the last three days is that uh, nobody's expecting it to happen tomorrow, but they want to see the effort. They want to see that first explanation of you that you understand that you have to find the risk and you have to do these things. So that was sort of encouraging from the large asset managers part or index fund part that they, want, they were they understood the challenge, at least, that was there. But boards are, ch are challenged with wrapping their hands around this because it's a big item to wrap your hands around. The good news, and I like to focus on some good news, is that COSO came out with an enterprise risk management program in 2018, which is widely known in the industry as the uh, risk procedures for you know, five basic principles of governance, strategy, metrics and targets, and communication. And so they laid on the ESG framework to this existing ERM program. So boards can use this COSO framework as a way to get familiar with the ER, uh, enterprise risk management platform as well as these new principles on the intangible assets such as human capital, um, environmental issues, and social issues that are really driving these communications on investors. If you were speaking to a group of directors today, what would you say to them on how boards should make this make the ESG risks an opportunity? That's a really good question. It really comes down to one thing. Risks and opportunities are the uh, two sides of the same coin. As a board member, you want to identify those items as an ability to drive the strategy in your company. We did a survey of investors um, and we found out that the information they were getting from companies um, did not support decision useful information. They needed transparency, context, links to business strategy. And that's the information that you get you know, when you go through this process and you start to identify uh, the material items that are important to our company and our sustainability strategy. I'm a fan of this white paper. Again, I think uh, it's going to be very helpful to a lot of companies that are just trying to get their arms around it. John, thanks for taking the time to join us. Pleasure to be here, TK. Thank you. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Members along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.